everyone. Welcome into North Dakota today. This is an exciting one. Armed with nothing but their sharp wit, comedians Colin Mockery and Brad Sherwood take to the live stage at the Fargo Theater this Friday, March 3rd, to create hilarious and original scenes in their two-man show, Scared Scriptless. Joining us this morning to talk about the upcoming show is the legend himself, Mr. Colin Mockery. Good morning. Good morning, how are you? Oh, I'm freaking out right now. I told you before we came on air that I was nervous. I'm so excited. It is more than an honor to be speaking with you this morning. Thank you so much for taking the time to greet myself and our viewers. Oh, anytime. I understand your excitement. I feel the same way. <laughs> anytime. Okay, so I'll call you tomorrow, same time. Okay, oh, sounds good. <laughs> So, of course, you are known by TV audiences for your work on Whose Line Is It Anyway? Fun fact, though, I looked this up. You were the Canadian Comedy Person of the Year in 2013. That's quite a feat. Yeah, it was, uh, yeah, no, it was, it was uh, lovely to be voted uh, that by my peers. So I'm, I've been incredibly fortunate in that I only have really one skill and somehow I, I've managed to turn it into a, a job. Absolutely. That's, you know, a life lesson. Figure out what you're good at and get paid for it, huh? Exactly. <laughs> well, we are incredibly excited here in the Fargo region that you and Brad have taken the show on the road. Tell us what we can expect this Friday. Uh, we like to say it's sort of a live version of Whose Line Is It Anyway Without the Dead Weight. And of course, <laughs> I'm referring to Ryan Stiles and Wayne Brady. Uh, <laughs> lovely people, useless. Uh, so, um, it's actually more interactive than the TV show. Every scene starts with a suggestion from the audience. We actually bring audience members up on stage to uh, improvise with us. Um, it's just two hours of goofy fun. So nothing is pre-planned. What we're going to be seeing is you and Brad truly improvising new material each show night. Audience member suggestions, as you mentioned, what are some examples? You know, we ask for, uh, we, we try to find ways of getting things that we've never had before. So we'll ask for an occupation, perhaps your great grandfather's occupation or an occupation where you have to wear a uniform so that we're not constantly getting proctologists and gynecologists, which for some reason <laughs> people say they want to see a scene about, but when you try doing it, then they kind of uh, step back. <laughs> then it gets a little quiet throughout the theater. It huh? really does. Very quiet. Very <laughs> So interactive in every sense of the word, typical, like a whose line is it anyway version, but live. This is just incredibly exciting for audience members. What are you hoping people gain from coming out to the show? Um, just a couple of laughs. You know, um, we, of course, didn't tour during the, the whole lockdown and, and pandemic. And then coming back, it just reminded us, first of all, how much we love live performing and how important an audience is to us because when we're doing a show they're really almost like our third improviser they're providing all the information um and it's just fun you're going to, you're not going to learn anything but you'll have a couple of good laughs <laughs> and that's all we could hope for Exactly. <laughs> okay, I really want to dig into your career a little bit too because you are a comedic writer for different shows and clearly you've been performing ever since Whose Line Is It Anyway? Looking back on your career and on your past, what stands out to you? Um, well, of course, I mean, Whose Line um, gave me a career, so I, I love that. But the fact is it allowed us to tour all around the world. Recently, I think it was about five years ago, it was the 30th anniversary of Who's Line, which starting, uh, started in Britain. Wow. So we went over and did four shows at um, Royal Albert Hall in London, which uh, was amazing yeah. and also seemed wrong in many ways. As you look at all the fantastic acts that have been at Royal Al Albert Hall over the year, uh, just to have us there, it, it was, we've been able to, you know, do shows at the Sydney uh, Opera House and a lot of the great theaters around the world. So those are always fun. Um, I, I love, and, and we all do, I think we all love having that sort of rapport with the live audience and it really does make such a difference. Well, for those of us who grew up with you and have been fans of yours since forever, we know it wasn't a mistake. It's truly earned with your international presence. All right, now I have to know, are there any pre-show rituals? Is there anything quirky that you have to do to get into the Colin Mockery vibe? It's so sad. No, I wish I could tell you, what there, you know, there's a physical warm-up and we just, no. We kind of sit, we have our coffee. Um, my main, my main thing is to try to get my mind totally blank which is fairly simple so that i just walk out on stage with absolutely nothing except 
what the audience gives us and what Brad and I come up with together. So I, I try to make sure I have nothing preconceived because that's when I have the most fun when I'm kind of, even when I'm kind of thrown by a suggestion, it, it, it's exciting for me because it gives me um, something to work towards. That's wonderful. It's exciting for most of us. And I've been laughing my way through this interview, just like I figured I would be. A big reminder to you folks at home, the show is this Friday, March 3rd at the Fargo Theater. Doors open at 7 p.m. Showtime is 8 p.m. Do not be late. Do you call out people who wander in? <laughs> oh, there is a severe satirizing, so be careful. <laughs> Incredible. Thank you so, so much for taking the time to join us this morning. We so appreciate your time and we look forward to the show. I will be in attendance, so I'll be out there oh. throwing out some suggestions. I'll have Great. to start we'll come back and say hi after the show. Oh, done and done. Everyone heard that, right? I have this on tape. I'm, I'm heading back after the show. <laughs> All right. Stick around, everybody. We have plenty more coming up right here on North Dakota Today. <laughs> done and done, folks. What did I tell you? And we got it on record, so roll the tape. We'll be flying down that balcony. Yeah, yeah. if his team tries to, de you know, declare that I'm a stalker, I'm going to say, no, 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 here's the evidence. I have the receipts. Yeah. <laughs> all right, we just had to come on and say how fun that was, so thank mm -hmm. you all for entertaining that with us as well. Coming up on today's show, an event that is filled with local vendors from all around the area. We're talking about the Red River Winter Market. Jillian tells us all about it after the break. <laughs> 